Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. Uh, today I have another boot slash shoe review for you. Now, this isn't necessarily a military shoe or boot review. Well, from pictures, uh, that's actually not entirely true. Uh, not albeit approved, but uh, there's quite a few pictures of these being used, um, especially in Vietnam, uh, believe it or not. You do see some in Korea as well. Um, not really fighting or in combat, but just being worn around. And I, I can understand why. These are kind of a cultural icon. Uh, and uh, that cool pair of boots uh, that we're talking about, uh, or shoes I should say, is right here. That would be the Converse. Converse is actually a surprisingly long lineage um, designed to be a basketball shoe, believe it or not. Basketball obviously invented in Canada by a Canadian, um, which was kind of a old man sport for a while. It was kind of played by middle-aged people in, in their 40s for quite a long time um, before it turned into the sport that we now know and love today. Uh, Converse were kind of the go-to for quite a long time as far as uh, basketball shoes would go, and then obviously they would change and, and stuff like that. Um, pretty quickly, but there was quite a few decades where these were these were the go-to for basketball shoes, and then they kind of saw a revival in a cultural movement. Um, you see a lot of them, uh, especially in the older ones, in, into the 20s and, and 30s and 40s, being worn um, quite a long time uh, by people, just everyday shoes. They were, they were quite a unique, cheap pair of shoes back in the day, because shoes for the longest time were made out of of leather you either were wearing like nice leather church shoes or you had like your nice leather work boots um so this was kind of something that was cheap because the materials were much cheaper than the nice leather you would get in a huge quality well-built meant to last forever pair of work boots so um these were kind of a thing that a lot of the younger people tended to to wear um, people that didn't quite have a full realized shoe size, people that weren't doing a hard labor job, these actually were kind of realized to be a, a, a relatively comfortable shoe back in the day. Um, they would continue to, to be used and everything like that um, in basketball for, for a while. Uh, ultimately, they would be pushed to the wayside for much better designs uh, and everything like that. You don't see people playing basketball in Converse today, obviously, even though that's what they were designed for. Um, they are now actually known as a kind of a, a alternative shoe for, for kind of troubled youths, I, I guess, and stuff like that, and skateboarders and stuff because of the very flat sole design. Um, but you do see these, like I said, once again being used in Korea, uh, Vietnam, quite a lot of uh, soldiers just wearing them, quite uh, relaxing and stuff like that. They are quick drying, they are relatively light. Um, they do get fairly good grip, not really in mud and stuff like that, but they are a very, you know, kind of flexible, easy to pack shoe. There's no shank in them or anything, um, which is actually kind of a gripe that I have with them. There's not a ton of support going on here, um, but they were initially a very cheap shoe uh, for, for playing sports in. Um, so if you've ever seen the Sandlot PF Flyers used to be made by... Um, Converse and stuff like that and whatnot. So I think Converse or somebody bought the name and might be reviving the PF Flyers. Um, but these are, this specific pair is the Chuck Taylor uh, 1970s models. This is the, the, the 70s, so as you can see, um, there's the, the back on them. And the difference between the 70s and the regular pair of Converse is uh, they're supposed to be made out of higher quality materials, thicker canvas, um, higher quality eyelets, uh, a better insole. There's like a pour-on insole in here rather than a foam one. Um, the uh, rubber, the rand that goes around the outside, the, the seam tape and everything comes up a lot higher on the 70s and it's much more higher quality rubber. Uh, and then obviously the sole is a much higher quality rubber. Um, I rather like these. I think they're, uh, they're really the first pair of shoes that I own that aren't a pair of trainers or a pair of dress shoes or black leather combat boots. These are kind of my first pair of shoes that aren't that that I would actually wear um, around in public. And I, I have been for the last uh, about three weeks. I've been wearing these these Converse around. Um, I got a couple gripes with them. 
Um, overall, they're they're fantastic looking. They add a little bit of color to my wardrobe. A lot of my color is uh, very wintry colors, um, and obviously like military surplus. So not not a lot of summery bright colors. And the red adds a nice touch. I kind of like the red actually, um, and I got them in red. Um, red and uh, off white and um, black. That's what the, the little accent colors are. are black and they're 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 relatively comfortable shoes. They're quite lightweight. Uh, they fit well. Um, they don't come in wide sizes. Now, the regular Converse does make their shoes in wide sizes. Um, the 70s are not quite in a wide size last yet. Um, so they're a bit too narrow for me, uh, unfortunately. Um, especially if I wanted to wear them with insoles, which I would recommend you do with these because there isn't a lot of support in these. Um, I would recommend getting a nice pair of insoles. That's going to give you some arch support because, once again, there is no no shank in this. I'm bending it right where the shank would be in most pairs of shoes. Um, but these would go on to be quite influential in, in military uh, doctrine and stuff like that. So if I slide these over here, I'm going to show you something really, really cool here. This is actually a military boot um, used by quite a lot of countries, most famously the French. These are uh, like a palladium uh, pair of boots. Palladiums are basically based off Converse, if you if you souped up a Converse for war, you would get a Palladium. As you can see, they're similar height, similar construction, uh, everything like that. Same kind of metal eyelet style, same kind of, you know, vent holes and stuff like that. But you see, you know, the rubber's beefed up on, you know, these, these combat boots, these tropical combat boots. Now, this is actually a Portuguese Marines pair. Same materials, though. Same canvas, albeit a much sturdier thicker heavier duty canvas on on these big huge rubber toe cap you know everything like that and then of course a much chunkier outsole uh to be used in a much wider range of environments and a wider toe box because obviously you want some some space there you might be able to see that these converse are really narrow and uh, my feet barely fit into these but you can see big chunky lugs to give you lots of tread um and these don't have a shank either but what you do have is they left this really big, thick, hard patch of rubber right in the middle where the shank would go, and it's a lot harder to flex and bend because of that, um, which is a, a really, really neat uh, feature, as well as some rivets for reinforcement at some, some wear areas. But overall, they're pretty much the same pair of shoes, just one's beefed up for war and one's for basketball, skateboarding, and all that other cool stuff. So, so... I figured I needed to get a pair of Converse that does have something, you know, cool going on for it. Spice up my wardrobe and everything a little bit. And overall, overall, I'd say, quite impressed, actually. I'd like to get them a new set of laces. Uh, I hope once I keep wearing them and everything like that, they will kind of stretch and give a little bit more um, to be a little bit more accommodating to my wider style of feet. But overall, I'm quite happy with these. I think they're quite stylish. I think they're pretty cool. They're they're a very historic-looking shoe, shoe, and they have a lot more... Uh, rooted in history than a lot of people would tend to think. Um, so, but hopefully you like this. I'm going to flip the camera around and just kind of show show me wearing them and stuff like that. Kind of some gripes of, of where my, my fitting would be and uh, everything like that. How the sizing for me would go uh, and stuff to talk about some people that are possibly looking for a pair of these. And uh, obviously just to show them how they are... Uh, look being worn and stuff so stay tuned for that and then we will come back here and conclude the video alrighty so here we are and hopefully you don't mind my my hairy Slavic legs and the fact that my lighting my shadow might get in the way a little bit here uh, because of just how my lighting is but I'm wearing uh, the palladium style boot here on the right the the what I like to call the the converse you know basically for war the, if the converse went to war and then I have my my Chuck Taylor 70s here on uh, my left foot um, and I'm gonna go over kind of some of the fit and feel and stuff of these because these would have been made about the similar time this pair here I think is from the 70s um, and this obviously converse was made in probably very recent years but it was designed in the 70s this this is a design from the 70s that's why they're called the Chuck 70s and first things first um, Obviously, I haven't had the Converse as long as I've had these because you can see that these are, are worn out. They're dirty. I've been through multiple sets of laces on these. Um, you can see where the sole is kind of starting to separate right here. 
Um, I've entirely worn a hole through that thick, chunky canvas there, so it's time for a new pair of these pretty soon. But first things first, the fit of the Palladiums is actually much nicer. Much wider toe box. I got room to spread my toes out, whereas the Converse, they're tight. My toes are all smashed together. They're, they're kind of pointier, and they're kind of designed to be that way, obviously, to get you a lot more surface area when you're playing. Um, so they're pointier and stuff, and you see a much more rounded toe box here on the Palladiums. Um, much nicer feel, uh, heel counter and stuff like that, because they have this big, wide kind of heel counter um, that doesn't cut into you as much. Um, and then this extra little bit of seam tape around the top. So it's more rounded, so it's not going to cut into you, especially if you're working hard or climbing or hiking or, or traipsing around the jungle or something like that. It's not going to be as bad. Whereas these, these are tighter. They're stiffer around the rear because of that big, you know, heavy, heavy strap there. They don't stretch or give as much because the eyelets are closer together, which gives you a much more customizable fit, sure, but it does make them tighter and harder to, to be at weird aggressive angles with, you know? Um, they're, they're very not finished well at the top, so they do cut into you if you tie the tops a little too tight, uh, and everything like that. Just, just going into it, something to notice. Once again, this is my first pair of Converse. This might be stuff all of you know who have been wearing Converse for years that I don't know because I haven't been wearing them for years. But I have been wearing these Palladiums for years, and they show it. They're beat to crap. But overall, I actually really like both of these, and, um... I think I'd buy a pair of Palladiums again before I buy a pair of Converse just because these are, in my opinion, a little bit better designed. Um, initially they'd come out in the in the 50s, the Palladiums would be based off of the, obviously you could see kind of the resemblance here, uh, and materials and construction to, to Converse which came out, you know, in the 19 teens. So, but just to show you kind of the fit and finish, you know, wider toe box on the Palladiums really narrow toe box on the Converse, which is, you know, as people are still continuing to genetically evolve, the, um, the people's feet get wider and wider, and especially as you age, the bones in your foot tend to spread out a little bit more. So I feel like Converse appeal to younger people that way and kind of the older generations when they were younger because they haven't really changed their lasts or anything like that, and they aren't nice maybe a american made pair from way back when would be nicer but these right now um are too narrow for my feet whereas the palladiums i have more than enough room uh to accommodate uh my toes and everything like that where my foot feels kind of constricted here in the converse but overall i mean i think that these will break in uh, a little bit because i don't remember i've had these palladiums for so long that i don't remember how how they fit, but I kind of vaguely remember their, them being a little bit tight too until the canvas started to stretch and everything. Um, and then I feel like they got much more manageable and I never wanted to take them off because these are actually like some of the best jungle boots ever designed in my opinion. And they work fantastic for the jungle. They drain well, they dry quick, uh, and everything like that. The canvas is better than the leather, so. But overall, I th I'm still very impressed with these Converse and I'm going to keep wearing them and I think they're quite stylish. and. I mean, I'm not going to go running in them, and I'm not going to wear them for like a whole day at work or anything like that for my longer days or when I have heavy lifting or standing on concrete all day. But as a kind of a casual shoe, I think I'm going to keep wearing these. And uh, I hope they last a long time and they hold up quite well because I plan on wearing them on a pretty regular basis. So um, hopefully you like this video. You subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Uh, everything like that. I know it's my first kind of boot video and everything like that. Coming back with new editing software, I plan to go back through a lot of the ones that I have, uh, get some more in-depth stuff, some more angles and stuff, especially show you the inside of the boots, which is kind of hard to do, um, and the individual tiny little markings and sizings and stuff like that, as well as how they fit and feel and maybe some outside environment, some wider testing and stuff like that. If that's some water testing, I mean, snow testing too. If that's something you would like to see, please leave a like, you know, uh, anything in the comments, uh, stuff like that, it all goes a long ways to support the channel and everything like that. I will leave a link to the Patreon down below. The goal is to get to 100 bucks a month by the end of the year. We're only about $30 away. Um, so if 30 of you decide I'm worth $1 a month uh, for my content, I would love you forever and all that other good stuff. All that money goes back into the channel um, to, to buy stuff and editing software and hopefully soon a new computer and things like that. So it all goes back into doing that to improve the channel. So 
you can be uh, trustworthy in knowing that it's all going towards the content and I'm not using it to buy, you know, cocaine and hookers and, and um, booze because that's what I use the YouTube ad money for. Um, not really YouTube, that's a joke. For those of you who don't understand, that's a joke, that's a joke. So, but stay tuned and hopefully I'll see you all here in the next video. Bye-bye now.